Well, since um, the person I'm debating does more talking when in this first um, video, after the debate officially ends, I decided that I'm going to throw this in there real quick and something at the end for you to make it even. So five points real fast. Number one, every year there are many, many graduates, nursing graduates, psychiatry degrees given out, psychology degrees given out. And so this becomes part of what the policymakers consider when they're making social policy and legislation, um, as well as big pharmaceuticals companies' needs and hospital needs and police needs as well, but we'll get into that. Number two, big pharma has a huge uh, marketing um, sector. Nine out of 10 pharmaceutical companies spend more money on marketing than research. Okay, and so they, it's a very aggressive marketing, you know. In psych wards, pharmaceutical companies actually send people there to talk about the benefits of the drugs to the captive audience in the psych ward. And, and, you know, there's kickbacks and there's, you know, consultants, you know, for pharmaceutical companies that sit on the, um, the board for the DSM, the Diagnostical Statistical Analysis of Mental Disorders. Okay, now there's the police who have undesirables they wish to get off the streets. You know, we all know the police have certain policies. For example, they'll sweep on Thursday and things such of this nature so that they have less work to do on the weekends. You know, so they sweep the type of people who might act up on the weekend uh, during the week. And they'll specifically target them. Number four, and the same thing goes for, you know, the quote-unquote mentally ill or political dissidents or any other undesirables. Number four is the hospital beds. There are very expensive hospitals that are very expensive to run. And if they weren't overactive and overzealous with filling up the psych wards and um, collaborating with the police to fill up the psych wards, they would have, they would probably take losses uh, every month, every year, instead of making profits. And number five, there's over a half a million deaths from psychiatric medications in Western countries alone. And there's tons of cognitive damage. And from the perspective of the elite and for people who are in different political groups who want people who think like them to do well and the people who believe that people who think like them manage to avoid psychiatry, they have no problem with the types of people who die from psych meds or the types of people who get cognitive damage who then have difficulty competing with them and the people who think like them. So when you look at this, what the person is recommending in this debate is not only wrong, it is killing people. So remember the topic is, does gang stalking exist? Not whether or not there are mentally ill people who claim to be gang stalked, which I believe is the case. Not, wish, not if there's people who lie who claim to be gang stalked who aren't, which I also believe that they're the case. But I believe that around half the people who claim to be gang stalked are gang stalked, but even that is irrelevant. The topic is, does gang stalking exist? And if you have a fair and balanced mind, you must come to the conclusion that it does because of the Department of Justice statistics, which says that it does. It says that there's smear campaigns, there's electronic monitoring, there is rape, there, and, and the reasons people do it is for control. The police do this in, in as much as 1% of cases. Do the math. What's 1% of 3.4 million people? If that is what the studies seem to indicate, in fact, that is what the studies do indicate when you interpret the results and the data correctly. So when you hear this debate, come to, you must come to the conclusion that I have won this debate because the Department of Justice makes it clear that exactly what people are describing as gang stalking takes place. One last thought I'm going to leave you with. This is not a debate about whether technology, you know, is being used in gang stalking because I'm being gang stalked excuse me, as far as, you know, voice to skull, energy weapons, etc. I'm being gang stalked and they are not using voice to skull or any energy weapons on me. So that is not a topic of the debate. Okay. And we all know that, you know, out of those 40,000 reported rape cases, approximately, drugs were used. So on record, covert drugging is used. I have proven that definitively. Listen to the debate carefully. Thank you. Okay, my argument is this. 
conspiracy theories exist on the internet, right? We also have a lot of mentally ill people, and it's not just mentally ill people. I was once a very heavy conspiracy theorist. I have a video on my channel that goes into detail about that a little bit. I used to believe some pretty extreme stuff. And I thought because I made videos on the internet, just very much like you, uh, exposing what I thought I believed to be true, that I was actually uh, getting a awesome message, et cetera, et cetera. And I believed as well at the time, not so heavily as you or other people, but I believed maybe the Illuminati was watching me because I was exposing some threats. But nevertheless, as I uh, grew out of this, it wasn't necessarily the case, in my opinion, that that was going on. I was actually being delusional and paranoid. But the crux of my argument is this, and I'm going to get to that as I expound on this later, but... You take some mentally unstable people, right? Such as Myron May. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was prominent there for a little bit in the TI communities after he did what he did. And if you're not aware of what he did, I'll let you know. He went into Florida State University and into the library and started unloading his shotgun on the people. And the reason why, I don't know. Those people had nothing to do with his gang stalking or whatever, but his whole purpose was... I'm going to go out here and harm people and leave all these messages behind and send shit to, uh, what's her name? I believe her name is uh, Renee Pittman. Renee Michelle Pittman, you probably heard of her too. But all this stuff is going on, and uh, she believed he was an imposter. Like, a gang stalker couldn't actually lose his fucking shit and go out there and hurt somebody, or a targeted individual, I'm sorry. She thought he was an imposter. She could have actually got him help. But there's people like you, and there's instances of you on the internet that do this, and others that actually dissuade people from seeking help that they very much need. Right, and I, these people, okay, not two minutes is yeah, up, yeah. I guess. I'll go ahead and let you go. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and read All right. I'm going to state my intros, and I'll, I'll address those later. Um, when I get my five minutes, I will show you using a 2009 DOJ uh, report. The gang stalking does exist. When you couple that with COINTELPRO and ABC News' documentary about MK Ultra in 1979, it becomes apparent. Just, it becomes apparent that gang stalking still exists. Um, uh, a former intelligence agent, Victor Marchetti, says MK Ultra never stopped in 1977. Is when he said that, and that it just and it, and it, it was just a cover story. There were 51 universities and schools and five prisons involved in MKUltra, as well as the military, uh, several intelligence agencies, and more. Um, there were more than um, over 200 sub-projects for MKUltra, and the idea that it stopped is a stretch of the imagination. Does the military stop making weapons? Is it not concerned with propaganda and the sentiments of the people here and abroad? For example, Dr. Ewan Cameron was the main psychiatrist in MKUltra, and he was also... Um, the president of the Canadian Psychiatric Association, president of American uh, Psychiatric Association, the World Psychiatric Associations, the American Psychopathological Association, and the Society of Biological Psychiatry during the 1950s. So I will go into detail showing you that on record police officers have been accused of stalking and group stalking. Electronic monitoring is used, bugging, email, smear campaigns, rape, property damage, and more. All things that TIs say gang stalkers have been doing. Studies have shown, studies by FFCH have shown that many gang stalking victims have college degrees such as myself and therefore are logical minds. Schizophrenia, according to the experts, rarely has late onset and most gang stalking victims are, you know, in, in their 20s, late 20s, 30s and above. And certainly it is hard to believe that thousands of people would believe the same exact thing and uh, not all of them are into conspiracy theory. And the government has been caught doing what they claim has been done with COINTELPRO, MKUltra, Mind War, and more. Then consider the head of the Army Psychological Unit came up with Mind War in 1980, a self-confessed Satanist, Mike, Major Michael Kino from PSYOP to Mind War, uh, the psycholo Psychology of Victor. Well, it's your turn now. Okay. Um, let me, let me, can I ask you a question? How old are you? I'm 34. 34. Okay, when did you um, start to believe in conspiracy theories? I'm just asking you questions just so I can kind of get a better grounding on where you're coming from. 
probably when, when did, when, well not conspiracy theories per se when did you feel uh the age you were when all this kind of started right but like when you felt like you were being targeted and that you were being oppressed by various agencies etc um probably about 2009 Okay, and uh, let's see. Now, how old would you be around the, about, uh, you said you're 34 now, was it? Yes. Uh, around, around then, I'd, pro I'd be about 27, 28, something like that. Okay, well, let me refer back to what you had mentioned about schizophrenia, that it very rarely has a late onset. Onset. And... Between the ages of like 20 to 30, that's still very much within the realm of it. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to diagnose you here. I'm not anybody credible whatsoever. I'm just a guy on the internet just like you are. I mean, the only difference is I'm wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt and you're dressed like you're about to karate chop me or something. But we'll, we'll, we'll leave that aside. But the, the thing that I'm getting at is that you're very much within that age group to be susceptible to having that mental illness, okay? And another thing I wanna refer back to, you brought up MKUltra. MKUltra existed, I completely agree. You know what also is? That uh, directional weapon stuff, all that other stuff, you guys always have a source to point back to the prove that this stuff exists. Show me the proof that this is actually being used on you. Show me, look, look, were you MK altered at any point in your life? Uh, you don't have to answer right now, but you can answer that later. But um, uh, do you suffer from B2K? And when you see the YouTube videos that get posted, right, a large percentage of them are pretty much just like like you, and it's not just, not just like you. I mean, you're all individuals in your own way, you know. And uh, but the thing is, is you don't actually see targeted gang stuff going on. What you see is somebody that's sitting in a parking lot or, or like nappy head roots. He's out in public somewhere. And it looks like he's going up to this group of people who look like they're homeless. And they, they may be mentally unstable, perhaps. He goes up to them, whips out his phone and starts antagonizing them for whatever reason that he perceives that, oh, this guy rubbed his nose or this guy scratched his nuts or whatever, that's aimed at me because I'm nappy head roots and I'm special. And I'm gonna go over here and start messing with these people. And then that escalates things. Do you see what I'm saying? And, but that's one thing you see a lot of this on YouTube, but rarely do you actually see hardcore evidence of, okay, not only are, are people stalking this guy, but they're connected to serious government agencies or whoever, or they're connected to a cult, or they're connected to this and that. You see what I'm saying? You, you, you very rarely actually see any evidence of that. And it's so rare that I've been looking into this subject for years and I've not seen a single instance that couldn't be disproven with some research. Go ahead. You just, you just want to end it there? I mean, you're, you're five minutes. Nah. You, you still yeah. have a couple minutes. Well, if I can continue, I'll, I'll expound on the other thing I brought up. Um, the point about, uh, the, the in, in my intro, about how this can lead people to become violent, right? So you have some people that are obviously uh, jaded with the government, and there's plenty of reason to be. I'm with you on the fact that our governments do suck, and they're not doing their job to their fullest capability. And neither are the citizenry, and they could do a whole lot more to help people. But what I'm saying is you have a lot of people that are already untrustful of the government. And then you have somebody like Pete Santilli, uh, Pete Santilli who comes along. And it's like, hey, I see this group of people here who have easily uh, malleable brains and they may possibly believe anything I freaking tell them as long as they think it has something to help them. You see what I'm saying? It's like these people believe that we're being stalked, right? And these people are bothering us and we got this boogeyman under our bed or whatever. And I'm not seeing any proof of it. If you could show me this boogeyman at the infamous day that is hiding under the bed and in the cupboard and they're filming things and they're shooting rays at everybody 
if you can show me this, I know the technology exists, but that doesn't mean necessarily that it's being used on you guys. And uh, but and let me go rewind a little bit more to I keep going off track because I'm pretty heated up about this subject. I'm passionate about it because I have schizophrenics in my family, but and they've gone through a similar thing. But the thing is, is that a lot of people get into this stuff, right? And you guys have a community of TIs that are sitting around telling each other, don't go to the psychiatrist. Don't don't trust anybody. Not thinking that any of these people are trustworthy at all because they're automatically a part of they. And they're a part of them. And anything they say that we're not saying is against the rules. And if you do follow this, we're going to excommunicate them from our group. And this leads people to believe in hardcore theories, and they exacerbate this by making people more scared. And you guys have a community of people that scare people more and more, but you're not actually seeing anything to be scared of. All right, all right. Um, it's about five All right. So, um, first, I'm going to quickly just breeze through this Department of Justice report, which is a lot of the the, the proof. Okay, so it says that. They measure um, the following stalking behaviors, making unwanted phone calls, unsolicited, unwanted emails, following or spying the victim, showing up at places without a legitimate reason, waiting at places for the victim, leaving unwanted items, presents or flowers, posting information or spreading rumors about the victim on the internet, in a public place or by word of mouth. So approximately one in four stalking victims reported some form of cyber stalking, such as email or instant messaging. That's one of the things that you heard being talked about. The nature of stalking behaviors experienced by victims. Unwanted phone calls, 62.5%. Um, unwanted letters and emails, 30%. Spreading rumors, 29%. Following or spying, 24%. Showing up at places, 22%. Waiting for victim, 20%. Leaving unwanted presence, 9.1%. Uh, this um, document also discusses that uh, I think it was about 60%, let me see if I can find it, about 60% of all stocking or some high number like that um, is group stocking. Um, let's see. It goes into the different genders and races of people and um, which is, doesn't mean that much but you know it, it goes it goes into detail about all the different right. aspects of it and um, so victim perceptions of reasoning stalking or harassment began um, the top two reasons are retaliation, anger, spite, 30%, and control is 25%. So this document, out of millions of people who are stalked every year, um, it says uh, 3.4 million people 18 or older were victims of stalking in a 12-month period. Okay, so, and 25% of them is about control. And who are the controllers? Who are the people who are the most inclined to be controls? You know, legitimate, you know, law enforcement, military. These are all a bunch of control freaks. Mental health, they want you to, they're on you to take your medicine. They force medicate people. The people that they're describing that are doing to this are control freaks. That's not necessarily true, but I'll let you finish. Okay, um, and then it goes on. Involvement of cyber stalking or electronic monitoring in stalking and harassment. Any type of cyber stalking or electronic monitoring, 26.6%. Okay, um, when it goes down to say percent of electronic monitoring involving vis video digital cameras, 40% uh, 40 of the people who said that um, there was electronic monitoring um, said that it, it involved vi uh, vi video or digital cameras. 35% said involved listening devices or bugs. These are things that gang stalkers, um, excuse me, target individuals report, you know, that they're being watched, they're being listened to. You know, that's very common in, in stalking on record from the Department of Justice. Um, types of help sought by stalking and harassment. They try to enlist their families. So the, the government knows very well that, that these people seek certain types of help. And, and on, on, um, number five or six on the list is talking to a mental health professional. So if the government is doing this, logically, they are going to try to, you know, cover all the odds and ends, isolate the person from the family, which is the number one, and, you know, right. deal, deal with the mental health angle. They want the mental health guy. There are, I, I know of several valid instances of that being true. So I agree with you with that being a problem. So go ahead. It says, how the victim felt when the stalking and harassment began and progressed. They feel annoyed, angry, anxious, concerned, frightened, helpless, depressed, sick, suicidal, etc. And this is kind of what we see. Um, there's 38,590 rapes as a result of stalking, uh, gang stalking, and in uh, Dr. John Hall's book, you know, he, he reports that gang stalking is, you know, that rape is happening as well. Um, 
Can I ask a question about Dr. John Hall? Is that the same guy with freedom from covert and harassment and surveillance.com? Yes, he, he's one of several he's doctors just... there. Um, and as well as Dr. Bell, correct? Yeah, I don't, I don't know their name off the top of my head, but there's a couple of doctors there. Okay, so... Okay, fair enough. I'm just, I, I was just wondering if that was the same one. That's fine. 40 Go ahead. 40% of the victims, um, it cost them between one, it cost them from $1 to over $5,000 with 40% of the victims is how much this document has cost them trying to move around, trying to seek help and lawyers and the different fees they pay. Um, they, you know, a lot of them lose employment of income as a result of the stalking and you hear financial sabotage is a part of it. That's com commonly what's TI's report. Um, it goes on to say that the reason why they, you know, 0.8% of all stalking victims do not go to police because the perpetrator was a police officer. That is one of the yeah, reasons. Hey, can I ask, uh, where is that source from? This is a uh, Bureau of Justice. No, 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 no. That specific statistic, does it list where that source is from? Um... Because that seems very incredible to me. If, if it is true, I will concede to it. If it's from you know a, a source that will say that, but that that just seems very off the wall to me. Well, at, but, at, I mean, I, there, it very well could be true. At the end, it says the Bureau of Justice Statistics is the statistical agency of the U.S. Department of Justice. And it says the report was written by Katrina Baum, Ph.D., Shannon Catalano, Ph.D., Michael Rand, and Christina Rose, Kathy Mastin, and a bunch, a bunch of names. Um, okay. Um, is there a link to this that I could find online if you could give it to me after we speak about this so I can read it? Yes. Uh, I've actually gone over the time, but uh, also, you know, it's important to look at from Saab to Mind, Mind War. Um, this is the Michael Aquino uh, document, and it's from 1980. Right. So that, that shows you the continuation from MKUltra to, the, you know, the, the, the evolution of Psychops. Okay. Um, do, you, do you have more to add? Or? Um, I, I, you, you may as well, you know, say what you want to say. I, you know, I went over anyway. Okay. I'm probably going to have to, you know. Yeah, it could, <laughs> because uh, you brought up one, um, well, it, it was the, it was the theme of what you kind of just mentioned there. You brought up a lot about uh, law enforcement abusing their power, which is, uh, a, a common fact, the police do abuse their power. I agree with you. COINTELPRO was very much real, and if people out there are naive enough to believe that something similar can go on today, that's also very naive, and I'm with you there. But the, the another thing that I would like to mention is law enforcement is not necessarily you, you mentioned positions of power and people that will do things like this they don't always have to be in positions of power they don't have to be law enforcement they don't have to be police uh you know doctor psychiatrist etc cetera, etc cetera. and what i'm saying actually is supportive of what you're saying to an extent because it also means that it's not just police or the the psychiatrists or the doctors or whoever or the president that's an asshole it's human nature that we have people that are vindictive when they feel like there's been a slight done against them. They'll do it for revenge, like you mentioned, or for control, to control somebody. And there's a lot of sick people out there that will do things like that. And I completely admit that. And I'm with you on that, okay? So as long as I get that out of the way, that you know that I agree with you, let me um, read you something as well. Because because I agree with you, that doesn't necessarily mean that I think this happens to everybody, okay? Especially just random people, just for no freaking reason at all. But this screenshot that I have taken from a old Facebook group that I seen that was involved with gang stalking and targeted individuals. And this happened after the uh, Myron May incident. Um, this person says, please let's be civilized. This is an honest concern of mine. I'm starting a new post because I wanted this to be a respectful conversation. How does one differentiate between RNM and mental illness? I'm not sure what RNM is exactly. Um, it's one of those acronyms that TIs seem to toss around once in a while. You might be able to answer that better than I could. 
but um, should I cover my bases? Or sorry, cover my bases and see a doctor, anyone, just in case to be safe. Have any one of you experienced these same questions and concerns? A concerned TI. So this was a person that was asking if he should go and seek mental health, possibly for anything that he may be experiencing. This person responds, and I'm not going to name names, but they're listed here in front of me. Don't go see a doctor. This is why they make you seem crazy. Just think if the government controls this, do you think anyone would agree with it? Just pray and seek Jesus to fix it. He will. Um, someone responds with a irrelevant comment about Mexico bring on Mayans or something. Someone else says, uh, the person that made the opening says, can I tell the doctor I don't feel comfortable with the medication at least? They can't legally force me to take it. Um, you're on this person says thank you etc cetera, etc cetera. but it, what i'm basically getting at with by reading this to you is that the these people are feeling as though they have the insight enough to recognize that they might have an issue and it's not just the government stalking them for whatever reason okay and they are told you know and also schizophrenics do have this delusion where it could be anybody stalking them the Jesuits, it could be Freemasons, it, it, and there's a thing called the illusion of reference. That's the thing that really crushes a lot of this, is because schizophrenics years ago used to refer to things around them at the time. There was a guy, I uh, forget his name now, but he used to write about these robot Frankenstein brain controls, right? And he was very much like a target individual. He wrote about how the government would come into his yard and he'd send black people over to beat him up. He was a white racist old bastard, right? And he used to write about, oh, these black guys are coming over to beat me up and they're hired by the government and they're brainwashed by them to come beat me up and this and that. Frankenstein brainwashing trolls, right? And this was his delusion of reference. And before, what did they used to refer to? This could go back even further and people think they're hearing demons in their head, et cetera, et cetera. And, or, you know, plenty of things. And people go up and act on this. You see what I'm saying? And there, there's groups of you guys that are out there and you guys encourage each other to not seek any kind of help. Even if you do feel like this person may go out and cause harm to somebody, you guys don't go out and actually encourage them to seek help. And let, let me get to another thing here. Um, let me see. Just a minute, I'm scrolling here. Because I wrote a rather lengthy article. I'll trade you the article you're reading for the one I'm reading. And we'll read each other's articles here. But uh, let me see. There's a series of videos here about a guy. He goes by Bernie is corrupt. This person lost his family. Um, he disappeared off of YouTube. I have no idea what happened to him because he was that type of individual that would go out and do some harm to people. And maybe that's what made him disappear. I don't know. He could be in a mental institute. He could be arrested. Who knows? But anyways, I can link you these videos as well if you like. But in these videos, and this is what I write about the videos. In these videos, he narrates as if it was aimed at his wife and children who seem to have left him after what occurred. He is trying to convince them that he isn't crazy despite what some sick doctor claims. And what had happened was somebody drove past him, right? And he turned a new turn around, followed them because he thought they were a gang stalker for some random reason. They just happened to drive a, the wrong color car that day. And he follows them to a gas station. The person gets out the car, starts to pump their gas. He gets in their face. He starts choking them out and screaming in their face. and. He gets locked up and his parents don't or not his parents his family doesn't want anything to do with it so let me continue reading that's the context of what happened here. he's trying to convince them uh he's trying to convince them he isn't crazy despite what some sick doctor claims that's his words not mine this leads me to believe he was diagnosed with a mental illness although he doesn't disclose what his diagnosis was he tells the story of how he drove down a country road somewhere in Fort Alberni looking for gang stalkers and this is his words, he was looking for them, which means his mind's already primed to see shit that isn't there, in my opinion, and then began to chase a country road, began to chase down a person who drove past him while talking on her mobile phone. 
According to Richard, using a mobile phone while driving was some kind of cue to let him know that gang stalkers were watching him. The chase ends with a person parking at a co-op service gas station and getting across to buy Richard for no apparent reason other than Richard is delusional and talking on her phone while driving is some sort of underhanded persecution tactic by the CIA or whatever it is you guys believe. This is a violent lashing out that luckily didn't end up with someone seriously getting hurt or worse. However, it appeared it had ended Richard's family life as he knew it, and understandably so. And if you don't understand why he lost his family, you need to kind of think about it a little bit. Well, let me, let me continue. Unfortunately, events like these are a dime a dozen for targets who often perceive normal public behavior as some sort of persecution against themselves. We exhibit A, Jason Rodriguez. Now, if you don't know about him, you need to research your own little conspiracy theory a bit more, James, because there's a lot of you guys like this. This guy was on the internet as well. But anyways, Jason Rodriguez, Jason's story ends a lot worse than Richard's does with six people shot, one person dead, and a life sentence behind bars for Jason. Jason claimed to have been gang stalked and his main stalker went by the code name Shark Tooth who communicated with him via voices in his head or a chip in his tooth. Quote from the Orlando Sentinel News article on Jason, the defense's case relied on opinion in the form of extensive expert testimony about what was going on inside his mind at the time of the gunfire. Six forensic doctors testified all of the same conclusion. Rodriguez suffered from paranoid schizophrenia at the time of the killings and wasn't able to know what he was doing was wrong. In the words of Dandy, uh, sorry, Dr. Randy Otto Rodriguez believed that there was a, sorry, Dr. Randy Otto, I didn't put a comma, so I kind of missed that. Dr. Randy Otto believed that Rodriguez thought there was a conspiracy of many people working together to harm him and his family. Does that sound familiar, James? which involved his former employer and law enforcement. Does that sound familiar? The paranoia centered on Shark Tooth, a voice Rodriguez heard that he believed was sending him threatening and derogatory messages, Otto said. And Dr. Jacqueline Blander said Shark Tooth had threatened him for years. Mr. Rodriguez reported that when he walked through that door, the place where he worked, Shark Tooth was there with his followers, which means that Shark Tooth was some voice in his head, a disembodied voice, and the people he used to work with were the followers of Shark Tooth. So, are you following me there? Yeah, well. In her, in her closing argument, let me just finish this little last paragraph here. In her closing, here, in her closing argument, public defender Melissa Vickers argued that the defense had proved Rodriguez legally insane. Six doctors with over 100 years of experience came in here and told you, number one, Rodriguez has paranoid schizophrenia. Number two, he couldn't know what he did was wrong because of, and that was his defense. Williams, however, and that was the prosecutor, argued that those opinions were sloppy, incomplete. They're incomplete because they didn't consider the facts you have heard. He told the jury, Williams noted Rodriguez left a threatening note and made a menacing gesture when they fired him in 2007, which means he had this little seed planted in his head and his isolation and his delusion about the world ballooned into this big thing, helped by internet conspiracies, such as yours. And you can continue now, I'm sorry. Uh, um, well, first of all, there are people who are mentally ill, and I personally don't believe that psychiatry truly understands them. But I think that if somebody thinks that they're legitimately mentally ill... I agree with you. I think if somebody thinks that they're legitimately mentally ill, Ill and they can't fix it themselves, then perhaps they should try medication. And if, if they don't feel like it's helping them, then perhaps they should stop. There are also- Okay, can I ask you this? Uh, and since we already had our five minutes thing, I just wanna ask questions back and forth and have a dialogue, right? right. What, what, can I ask you this, right? It, you, you said maybe they should try medication. How, how can they try medication when the one group of people they trust on the internet, and that's the only group they trust, is people that agree with them about this theory, is telling them don't go do this don't take the medication that makes the voices stronger or that helps them somehow that helps the gang stalkers get into your mind how, how how are you supposed to fight against this as somebody that's legitimately concerned about mental health like you claim um well people you know people Shit, everywhere that backwards oh well. 
Sorry, I ruined a cigarette. <laughs> Go ahead. People everywhere give um, people uh, bad advice. And, you know, people convince people to join gangs and be criminals and to rape women and so on and so forth. Um, I think that this thing needs to be exposed, but yes, there should be more, perhaps more consideration as to who is actually mentally ill. And sometimes it's hard to see unless you really get to know the person. And even then it can be hard to, to truly understand. In my case, it's more clean cut because I have recordings of people admitting that they were told to provoke me to get me to the psych ward. I have videos where I'm with somebody else and they see it the same way I do. They see a, a person who uh, gives me a hard time in a fast food restaurant and as we're leaving in the parking lot, he has a government license plate. And out of everybody, and, and this is the, you know, the one time this person went out with me, they, a gang stalker was there, government license plate, the whole nine. You know? And I've had people come up to me and tell me that the reason why they did it was they were told to do that and that you know, not to worry because at first they came at me very hostile and then they say, you know what, they want you to think that, don't worry about it, and then they drive away. I've had police officers that I've recognized, Santa Clara County Sheriff Department that I've recognized, off duty, you know, coming to provoke me, and there's, there's, there's a lot of you know, logical evidence in my case. And, and also I have 4,000 videos about conspiracy theory on the internet that goes back to 2009, around the time that it started, and I've pissed off a lot of people. I, I call out certain groups, you know, and it's pretty much what can, you... Can, can I ask a question about that? Uh, just so you said you pissed off a lot of people, right? Yeah. Okay, so when you started your conspiracy videos on YouTube, now, I, I, I don't know if you really see it the way people such as me would see it. When you come out, you had a video earlier today that I was commenting on, and you, you said some things in it such as... Uh, yeah, what were the words now? I'm trying to remember. You said something along the lines of uh, we're going to wipe out the people that doesn't like. And uh, let's see. what. Uh, I think he froze or something. So I lost the call. I'm going to um, get it back right now. My teeth look a lot wider in here. I don't... Sorry, I man, I got disconnected there. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, I can hear you fine too. Uh, where did it cut me off? Uh, talking about, I think you were referring to when I said to wipe out the people that God doesn't like. Right, right. Okay, now let me let me continue my train of thought there. And in your uh, one of the other videos, or maybe it was perhaps the same video, um, and maybe this is poetic speech on your behalf, I'm not sure, but it doesn't necessarily come off with that vibe to me, even though it did kind of rhyme. But it was like, uh, you mentioned in the other video that um, this is going to be, this isn't the end times, but it's going to be the end to me, or for me. What does that mean? Like, you, and you're speaking about going to war, are, are you uh, like, what, what are you getting at? Because you're you're speaking in such vague terms that I don't know what you got going on. And, and I don't want to think that you're the type to go off the of my remake, but he was speaking some similar language. And the whole point that I've been having this conversation with you is to bring that up. And I want to know that you're safe in, in you can believe whatever you want to believe i'm okay with that but at the end of the day you're not gonna do something crazy so what is this war that you're talking about what is it that uh, your your time's almost up you're in your end time it's your end times what does that shit mean to you? well what, what, as, a, as a person that doesn't understand you and i just I mean, this is the first time speaking to you imagine what other people see as well you know what i'm saying yeah. Um, so, but, so what do you have to say about that? And that's just my question: is what are you getting at with that? Well, I, I wasn't referring to anything that I'm going to do in particular. I was more referring to that there's a war being waged against me, and that the way things are going, that you know, eventually, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm personally, I'm a militant person. I believe in f fighting the system when they go too far. Oh, I noticed. I noticed. <laughs> I believe that there are millions of people dying every year and the situation calls for uh, a, a violent revolution, a revolt. So, you know, and I think that because I see it this way, even if I don't act at all, even if I just keep making videos, 
the system and the people behind it are inclined to take me out. The political opposition is inclined to want to take me out. And I, I believe that they are soft killing me. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm someone, I, I used to smoke weed for a long time. I've experimented a little hey, bit. Hey, hold on, hold on, hold on, man. No, like, I, I just want to stop you for a second. You're... You're sitting here talking about a violent revolution. What are you expecting is that, like, your videos that you're posting is going to inspire people to go out and do what? Exactly. That's what I want to know. <laughs> well, you know, I, I can't truly spell it out because, you know, but I'll say this, that, you know, this, this is a time of war. I don't believe in killing innocent people. I believe that when somebody becomes an enemy combatant, that you can deal with them as such, from the foot soldier to the guys on top. So okay, now let now let me interject with this again. I'm sorry to be cutting you off like that, and that's kind of rude of me, and I apologize. But what I'm trying to get at is you're you, you're saying you, you you're you don't know for sure what's going to come of it, but you think it's a time for the the tree of liberty to be watered with the blood of tyrants to, in the long run, which is you know fair enough that you're you're saying that and you stand by that, but but. I'm referring to again is when you have unstable people like I was mentioning earlier that are in this community and this guy hears you speak perhaps just imagine it right hypothetically somebody along like that hears you speak and they say things like you're saying and they somehow in their mind they perceive that okay it's time to go out there and just start relaxing fools clack clack let's go out there and just start popping you know what i mean it, like it, you, do you see what you're 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 capable of causing i'm not saying that you are doing this actively but what what your rhetoric could lead to yeah um and, and it could be very misguided because i realize you're passionate but i'm not sure the logic is behind it and that's just my opinion and you're welcome to disagree and I'm sure you do but I, I just believe it it's highly uh, it's a highly misguided thing I understand that you kind of view yourself as a warrior poet and you live that kind of lifestyle to the T you're sitting here in a karate gear and, and you know all this other stuff and you're a very militant guy I mean you're, you're here dressed for war you know, you, you, you look like somebody I want to fuck with in the street, just to be honest with you, you'd fucking crush me. But uh, what I'm getting at is that you, you're, you're speaking some rhetoric and you're not as careful as you should be. And you may believe this stuff is happening to you, but I'm not seeing evidence of it. And to be honest, it comes off a little bit like you could be one of these guys. Like Mappy Head Brutes as well is another type like that, which... I kind of worry about because he walks into a crowd of people at like 5 a.m. and obviously homeless, they're standing outside waiting for a store to open up so they can get some coffee or whatever the hell and get on with their day. And he walks into them, he starts antagonizing them, he whips out his phone and thinks he's a big shot and everybody turns around and they're like, what the hell? And they're going to antagonize him back because he's escalating the situation. He's walking into a crowd of people and messing with them for no apparent reason. And then they start messing with him. And I'm not sure if you saw the video with the bike thing where he almost got into it with these guys. But suppose one of them had a gun. And for no reason, his dumb ass would have got shot over some stupid shit he believes in. In my opinion, it's stupid shit. Well, and so, I mean, that, that, that's what I have to say about it. My personal opinion of uh, Nappy is that he is being gang stalked, but he's not right about everyone who's doing it. You know, he's too sensitive. He thinks that, you know, he sees somebody, he's like, that guy's gang stalking. That guy must be gang stalking. This guy's, you know, and me, I'm a lot more careful than that. You know, I, I can see a lot better the signs, you know. People really have to go out of their way to, you know, show me that they're gang stalking me before I come to that conclusion. And I compare it to how life was like before gang stalking. You know, people who didn't used to stare at me at the store, you know, for like a whole minute straight. You know, they didn't used to follow me around. They didn't used to cut me off in traffic, you know, and, you know, the one headlights, you know, before I didn't used to pack, I, I live in a kind of small town. There wasn't that many people driving around with one headlights. I see like five, six of them every time I go out, you know, on, on a uh, 15 minute drive, you know, and, and there's not that much cars in traffic. So, you know, the, you know, I, I think that he is being gang stalked, but I think that, you know, and I also got to realize that part of what they want, they want people to lash out. I believe that they want to bring in gun control, population control. It's about eugenics. Oh, man. No. 
No, and, 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 and let me just kind of say my piece on, the, on what you were saying about going into gas stations. You feel like people are staring at you from, okay, that I, I suffer from an extreme anxiety. I do a lot of things to, to cope with it, right? But um, this, and this was long before I knew about conspiracy theories or gang stalking or any, any of the stuff you guys are into. And this is stuff I also used to formally be into, although not as much. I didn't think I was actually being stalked as hard as you guys do. I don't think people are trying to stop me from being a karate champion or whatever it is that's happening to you. But I used to suffer from some anxiety hurtful. And when I came across you guys, and I already had some paranoia going on, but I had already gotten out of the conspiracy theory belief because i researched everything both sides of every argument and there's always both sides and there's always a middle line as well that you have to draw your own conclusion with it but i long story short i used to suffer from anxiety and i noticed a pattern that you guys have where you guys notice certain patterns like red cars okay and I, this is a game i often play with my friends whenever i tell them about what you guys believe about the world and stuff and it's, we'll be in a car and it's like okay you know what these guys believe red cars are the bad guys so every red car we pass from this point on is a bad guy do you know how many red cars we actually noticed because our brain was picking up that pattern because i brought it up to begin with and when your brain is trained in that cycle you're gonna you're gonna have this thing called patternicity where you see patterns where there really aren't patterns but because you told yourself to notice that pattern, you're going to see that pattern. And another thing with the anxiety that that brings up is uh, when you go into a place and you go into there with the mind thought, like I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to live as a targeted individual. And just try to imagine, like, okay, maybe there are gang stalkers around. You know, maybe because I said some screwed up things in my time. Maybe I'm actively being stalked. Who knows? Because there's a lot of people that could be being stalked according to your beliefs that don't even know it yet until they are privy to information that you guys are. Until they have the keys, so to speak, to know what's going on with them. But when I go in there, knowing what you guys supposedly know, and when I go in there and I'm looking around and I see people staring at me potentially, and, and even though I don't believe in gang stalking, I still feel that way. I'll go in there and there's a person standing behind me in line. And I'm just kind of like, wow, this person's judging my every move. You know, that person coughed when I handed that person money. They probably did that just to mock me on some level. You know, it's it, but when it comes to Nappy, though, and other people like him, and there's a lot, but when it comes to Nappy, though, it's like, okay, I'm rubbing my nose in the library. And this person's over here making a video and I don't even know about it, but they're filming me rubbing my nose and they think I'm some evil person on the internet now. That's gang stalking this person, right? And so say somebody saw that video of this random person rubbing their nose and go, oh, well, that one was stalking this guy. I'll, I know what I'll do. I'll do him a favor and I'll kill this guy or I'll beat him up or, or accuse him of something. And this person doesn't know what's going on. They're just a random person like you or I out in the street. And your nose itches once in a while. My nose itches once in a while. I cough once in a while. I smoke a lot of cigarettes. If you can't tell, and you know, I got I got a lot of I got a lot of that shit going on. And the thing with Nappy is he likes to jump on homeless people for coughing a lot. And with homeless people, I'm pretty sure he knows this. They live outside. Homeless people outside are going to have worse respiratory systems because of the elements. So they're going to cough more. They're going to have more sinus problems. They're going to rub their nose more. They're going to do things. They're going to have bad hygiene. So they're going to scratch their balls and their ass more, man. You see what I'm saying? And, and he goes out, and I don't know why, but he's always around homeless people. If it's that crowd that does this to you, get the fuck away from them. Go somewhere where those people aren't. Because you're walking into that crowd and going, fuck with me. See what I'm saying? Yeah. But with me, you know, remember I said earlier that some guy has come up to me before and said that, you know, he's basically staring at me. He drove up to me and he said, you know, because uh, I live on a private road right by the sign. He said, oh, I didn't know. He basically drove by me, he drove back around and he said, oh, I didn't know it was a private road. And then he's like, do you live here? I was like, yes. And he's like, where? And I kind of went quiet because I'm, I'm thinking, why is he asking me where? 
And then he said, and then he asked in like a kind of hostile voice. He's like, where? And then um, I kept, you know, cause I was still kind of thinking, what should I say? This is weird. And then, then as he's turned around, as he's driving away, he says, don't worry. They just wanted me to make you think that we're coming after you. And then he drove away. Okay. And then there's the other time when I'm with somebody else that I told you about, and I was in a fast food place, Popeye's chicken, I think it was. And this guy who works for the government, you know, was basically acting weird and, and talking to the person I was with, asking her weird questions. And, and she, she was like, yeah, this guy's weird. And I'm like, you know, I asked her a little bit about it. Then, then I pointed to the fact that he was sitting in a car with government license plates. And then, and then, you know, you should see that video. It's hard to really explain. And you, you should hear our explanation for it. It's, it was really out of the ordinary. And it was like the one time this person went out with me, you know, usually when I see that person, I just go to their house, hang out for a little while and leave. The one time they actually went somewhere with me, there was a gang stalker there. So, you know, I think that there's, there. Well, uh, well, well, let me throw this at you. The thing is, is like, uh, I'm, this is where I'm going to agree with you is because we do live in a highly surveillance state of being right now. I mean, everybody's watched on every level. Um, pretty sure my computer probably records me and does all kind of shit. I don't want it to be. And, you know, all, all that kind of stuff goes on. And police, they, like I mentioned earlier, Tone Tell Pro does their thing. But you, you, you remember just a few minutes ago when I felt like that, that you could potentially be a threat because of some of the rhetoric you said, right? Now, did you say the same kind of shit back then when this happened on the internet? Because if it were me and if I were a little bit more jumpy, I might have typed in, hey, FBITip.gov. Oh, yeah. James Jackson said this crazy shit. You see what I'm saying? And maybe they had some weirdo come around and he's undercover and he just wants to know what you're about. And maybe they actually are watching you because of the thing. And, and it's a chicken before the egg or egg before the chicken. Did the gang stalking come before my delusion? Or did the delusion come after the gang stalking occurred? Did, did my idea that they were fucking with me come first? Or did they fuck with me first and then I got the idea? Because if you're on the internet and then you're like me, and it's like, I'm looking up these theories about you guys. And I say, say I don't necessarily believe that first, but I'm hearing all you guys and I'm picking up these patterns in my head and it's like, well, damn, there's a red car. Maybe they're fucking with me too. You see what I'm saying? And then there could be people that already are actually being stalked or whatever, or maybe they're not even being stalked, but maybe they have some, you know, crossed wire in their head that makes them feel that way that they're being persecuted by nobody but they just create a persecutor just for the sake of being persecuted or what you know i can't claim to understand it but you know what i'm getting at here it's like which which comes first and, and it's hard to tell like the, some, the thing is about this is like when you guys spread this stuff on the internet you guys recruit people into the mental illness you see what i'm saying it, it doesn't it doesn't take people like you you i'm not diagnosing you like i said but you, all it takes is one crazy person that's schizophrenic to get online and make these claims like that shark tooth guy I'm talking about. And then somebody else believes it and thinks it's happening to them, although it may not be true. And for all I know, I can't disprove this stuff about shark tooth because none of it's provable or disprovable. It's just some shit he's claiming. But what I'm saying is, is that it, even though he believes it's real, you can have other people believing this stuff that didn't necessarily believe it was real at first but then you got other people jumping on the bandwagon and because they already are privy to believing in these conspiracies they already believe 9-11 was an inside job and that the government stops people and et cetera et cetera and nsa and you know snowden all this stuff coming out and it's already there and there's a lot of this in fact but then they pick it and run with it with their fantasy you see what i'm saying and when, you, when you're somebody like Matthew Roots and you go out there and you're accusing random bystanders of stuff and starting, you know, shit with them, you know, and, and I'm not saying you're like that. The only time I ever see you, you're in this room. But Matthew, when he goes out, he's starting shit with people. He's out there in the world pushing people around. Well, that's, that's just my view. 
I say that there's probably four categories of this. And, and, and I just want to say one thing is that I think maybe some of the rhetoric you had said back then, I don't know your older stuff. I only heard about you maybe three, four weeks ago. And now I started watching some of your stuff. But from what I can tell, if, if this, if any indication of it, I wouldn't be surprised if somebody was telling the FBI, like, hey, this guy on the internet saying some kind of off-the-ball shit. And he's trying to instigate other people to do something. And I don't know what that is. And it, apparently James doesn't know what that thing is yet. But it's something. And he's trying to start it. So maybe they're trying to find out. So you opened the door for somebody to mess with you at that point. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. Um... When you mess with them, you can't, you can't mess with somebody and expect them not to mess with you back is what I'm getting at. Oh, yeah. And that, that's why I believe it's about my videos. When I first started making videos, I took a very kind of passive stance. I was just giving information about the history of secret societies and things like this. When I started talking about psychiatry, I think it truly began on the anniversary of my uncle's death. Um, and I, I was arguing with my parents about whether my cousins should be on psych meds because his, my uncle had died and they were acting strange. They thought they had a mental disorder. They thought they had temporal lobe seizures, some crazy, you know, rare mental disorder. I, or, or it's rather a seizure disorder. I didn't think they did. And so when I was younger, I had been to the psych ward for, you know, um, basically arguing with my parents. I went next door to see the neighbor's daughter and they thought that I had a temporal lobe seizure and I didn't know where I was going. So when I came back, my uncle and my dad had jumped me and put me in the back of the car and drove me to the psych ward. The people there said that they, they shouldn't do that, but they'll accept me there that time. Um, and that was the first time I, I went to the psych ward. And then later on, okay, my uncle died, so it was the anniversary of his death, and I, I was arguing with my parents about my cousins. So basically they decided to set me up to go to the psych ward. And I was already making videos at the same time. So basically my older brother came upstairs, started an argument with me, you know, we got in a little tussle. My dad came upstairs, he's like, what's going on? And he automatically gave my older brother the benefit of the doubt, and boom, I was back to the psych ward for the first time in 10 years. And you know yeah can, can i just say man that like you're i i really really feel what you're saying right now and i am sorry that that had happened to you that you went through that i mean, just as a human being to a human being i'm sorry that you had to go through that man but it, it, i just want to say that they went about it the wrong way you don't it, see what, what they did is reinforce your beliefs if anything because they're jumping on you and what they're doing is a persecution in a sense because they're jumping on you for feeling and believing a certain way and putting you in a place where you don't want to be and making people control you and that's the wrong way to handle people like you in my opinion you know I, i'm i'm from the old school i'm kind of you know i feel the same way about psychiatry as well because they could do a lot more and the thing is is like when, it, when there is somebody like a Myron May, what can I do to help that person? I can't really tell somebody about somebody like that. And what will they do? They'll come, they'll wrap you up in a jacket with a built-in hug, and they'll throw you in a rubber room and just feed you drugs, and that's not going to fix anything. And, and then when your family just looks at you like you're damaged goods, you're crazy, I, I'm just going to throw you in here. And, and that's where the persecution feeling comes from. And I totally understand that, man, and feel your pain, dude. And I'm really sorry that you went through that. And then the, and oh, go ahead. that's the wrong way to do it, in my opinion. And, and then, you know, because my dad's a brain surgeon, the local sheriffs, they, they, they take his side automatically. You know, they tell me things like, well, oh, shit. You know, they, they tell me if you take your medication, your life will get better. And they don't even know anything about psychiatry. They don't know anything about me. But they tell me that when they come. They don't. They don't know what happened. You know, the first time they came here, I had this lock on the inside of the door. The inside of the door was locked. My, the, I, I had a, a, a plate full of chicken wings. It was broken on my. I have a hardwood floor. And I'm like, look. I'm like, look. I was in my room minding my business. My older brother came up here and started. And here's here's the evidence of a struggle. And you know what the cop said to me? He said, I don't see any broken plate. I don't see any broken lock. He's standing right by the broken plate. There's chicken sauce and chicken wings all over the floor. The lock is still broken right now, you know? And he, he said... And you know what that is? And I hate to say it about our police system, but that was a police officer that just did not give a shit. And he just wanted to get you out of his hair so he could go home and do whatever the fuck he wanted to do for the day. And I hate to break it to you, but 
that's what it was is just pure apathy i don't think you were being specifically targeted and fucked by that police officer per se i think he just did not give a shit about his job and he just wanted to take care of whatever he had to take care of so he could get out of there Oh, that's, that's just my opinion. Yeah, but yeah, I'll let you continue. That, that's pretty much how it started. But then after that, I started feeling angry because I went to the psych ward for like two weeks. I had to pretend like they're helping me just to get out. Because when you're in the psych ward, you kind of like, you got to do everything they say, take the medication, and pretend like you're better or they're not going to discharge you anytime soon. They might even send you to outpatient services and your parents won't take you home. Or they say you have to have somebody to, you know, to live with to, 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 to be discharged. You know, you can't live by yourself because you're a threat to society or whatever. Yeah. So, you know, my parents had to agree to take me home. So they could send me to outpatient service or they could do something called a temporary conservatorship where my parents take control of my money and they give me $10 a day of my own money. And, you know, and it's ridiculous, right? And what? Yep. That's hold it. on, hold on, hold on. Go back, go back a little bit. What job did you have that, uh, or, 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 or how were they able to take your income? Uh, they, they didn't take my income. They had the option to. It's called a temporary conservatorship or a TCON. It's when your um, your guardian or your, the person who's responsible for you uh, takes control of your money, and they give you ten dollars a day from your own money. Therefore, you know, you can't spend your money frivolously or you can't spend it on something that's going to hurt you or whatever. You know, it, it becomes... Okay. Can I just say that that could be helpful in in certain cases if somebody is like that, though. You, you see what I'm saying? Like, if somebody is willing to go out there and just spend their money like crazy, like, I, I have... Uh, known people with borderline personality disorder and they would just spend money like stupid and they will steal money from people and spend it and they won't buy anything special they'll just buy it just to give it to other people but anyways that that's one reason why they do have things like that i'm not saying it's justified that they used it on you but that's why that's in place oh, 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 oh. i think they, they, they didn't use it on me. They just have the option. They, they've used outpatient oh, services right, on me. Right. It, it's, it's things that they hold over my head. They're like, if you don't do it our way, we can do electroshock therapy. We can put you in a state mental hospital for fucking four years. You know, they have all these horrible options that they scare you with. You know, I, I've, you know, they, that one time they accidentally sent me to the wrong hospital. And I think it was on purpose because when I was there, it was Horrible. There was gang members working as security guards. There was people, you know, basically uh, uh, strapped down to, to beds, you know, getting forced medicated, and they're prepping people for electroshock therapy. You know, they were showing me, hey, if you don't, you know, fall in line, this is what's in store for you. So I, I do believe psychiatry does help people so in some cases. I don't think it's a whole lot. I think it's a lot less than people think, but I do think it's a, the main purpose of it is it's a mechanism of control. It's controlling deviant behavior. They drug people based on well, behavior, you know. There's no well, that that's that that is 100% true. But you, you say it as though it's tinged with this negative thing. Do you, do you not think that somebody's behavior needs to be controlled if they're capable of going out there and harming people like this person I mentioned earlier? There, there's other people in that list I could go for. If you like, hey, give, give me give me just a second. I'll let you talk for a little bit. I just want to um, find something as you speak. I'll be listening. Well, you know, I think that when you when... actually hold on, hold on. I, I already found him. Um, Aaron Alexis, uh, the naval yard shooter. You know him, right? Yep. Okay, Aaron Alexis. His story ended with thirteen people dead, counting the victims he murdered and himself. In case you don't remember, he believed just like a lot of other targeted individuals that he was under attack by low frequency radio waves he etched the words in the torment and not what y'all say better off this way and my elf weapon onto the barrel of his weapon the clues about alex's mental state and motivations came from inscriptions found on his running 10 870 shotgun and documents found on his electronic devices um, in one document he wrote, an ultra low frequency attack is what I've been subject to for the last three months. And to be perfectly honest, this is what has driven me to this. Now, when I, when I look deeper into this, right, I, I look into this story in particular very heavily because at the time it was fresh when I was getting into this gang stuff and stuff. And 
the the stuff showed that he he was he was hearing high pitched sounds in his head, right? Like B two K. Do you do you claim to do? do I, I haven't heard you say it yet, but do you hear voices? Do you have B two K? No. You don't have that. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so you're not at the level that I'm talking about. So I'm glad for that, and I'm very, very glad that you're not like that. Because these people that start talking about that shit, that's when I get worried. But let, let me let me continue on what I was talking about. Um, it, he uh, heard high pitched hums in his head. Now there's a link between tinnitus and schizophrenia. And they'll misdiagnose people often for having tinnitus when they actually have schizophrenia. And the pitch that they hear in their head is actually an auditory hallucination. A hallucination doesn't have to be visual. It can be auditory as well. You can hear strange things. You can see strange things. You can think strange things. There was a one time, and I don't tell this often but i did some drugs in my history there was one time when i heard tupac in my head for like a week just uh, you know my thoughts were in tupac's voice you know just weird stuff like that you know and you can alter your brain's chemistry or it can happen naturally through some kind of uh you see what i'm saying yeah and, and but but this will happen but it turns out that uh aaron alexis had the misdiagnosed tinnitus when he actually had schizophrenia And so this comes back to the psychiatry department and the doctors. And it's not necessarily that, oh, they planned this and they targeted him. But the main thing with conspiracy theories in general, like 9-11, like uh, any of them, name it. Name a conspiracy theory for me. The thing that happened that the government, you you think, caused most likely happened because the government was incompetent. Not necessarily. This person did not respond to the questionnaire, which I show you has six people who say that not only their food is being tampered with, but it is one of the worst part of their gang stalking. So this, and that was on Facebook, and this person was not one of the people who responded. Now listen to this. I brought a box of rice aroni, which I usually don't buy, but I bought it, I think, you know, it's a compromise for my children. And then on the box, you can see it looked like it had brown rice and different rice in it, but everything is white. You know, it don't look right. Usually you have brown rice in this, and I added the vegetables to it, garlic and onions. Um, but when I was cooking it, I smelled bleach. You know, I'm thinking, I don't know. I started looking around, did someone get into bleach? and somebody has bleach open? No. And um, I just thought about it at least for 15 minutes, you hear me? And th- that's my senses, you hear me? The activation, like my se- my smell is very act- active uh, and very sensitive. And that's my higher self saying, probably I don't need to eat this. I don't need to serve this to my children. It's something with bleach in this rice, you hear me? I don't see any brown rice at all. It shows on the um, box, brown rice. But you don't see that in here. And I actually smell bleach very, very strong. You hear me? So I don't think I'm, I'm just going to throw it out. So you see, um, this pretty much destroys the idea of, you know, that this is some sort of a delusion that is being fed into. This person didn't, you know, say, well, maybe there's drugs in my food. It's the same thing that happens to me. They didn't say, well, maybe someone did something to my food. They first noticed something out of the ordinary smelling bleach then they, they started you know when they did a further investigation which is basically what police do you know first something draws their attention and gives them a reasonable doubt uh, excuse me um it gives them a reasonable cause you know to to f- further investigate and upon further investigation she noticed that the the rice wasn't the color that it is supposed to be and there could be different reasons for this one the people doing this Perhaps we're in a hurry and just put the white rice in. Perhaps they wanted her to notice that it was different and that they were messing with her food because they knew that there's a lot of skeptical people, such as the person I debated last night, who need extreme amount of evidence, a ridiculous amount of evidence before they believe. Speaking of that debate, I believe I won because 
the topic was, does gang stalking exist? Not, am I being gang stalked? Or are there some mentally ill people who think they're being gang stalked? But rather, do, does gang stalking exist? And the Department of Justice report, when it shows you that, I think it was something like, there was a large percentage of, of the 3.4 million people in a 12 month period who were being gang stalked, you know, over a million of them were being stalked by groups. And it also showed that a police officer was part of that, okay? So when, in the part of the report that said that um, they sampled 10 people out of the 3.4 million, and of the 10 people, or of the less than 10 people rather, because it was 0.8%, so maybe it was nine people, whatever the math does, you know, of the, of the less than 10 people, um, at least one of their stalkers was a police officer, and that's why they didn't report to police. So when you apply that to the larger picture, what are the odds that of that ten, that sampling of ten people, you know, that that was the only police officer in the in the bunch? Logically, there was police officers involved, and logically, um, you know, common sense alone, and and part of one of sociological study is studying a small sample of people and saying how it reflects on the whole. But anyway, logically, it shows you that yes, there are police who are group stalking, and the DOJ report when the results are interpreted correctly, you know, it more than just indicates it, it screams that there is group stalking taking place and police officers are part of the people who are involved. And we know from racial profiling and other incidences in the Rampart Division, the Code of Silence and a long list of things and the cover up in Chicago um, that yes, police work together in groups to fix things the way they want them to be. <clears throat> Thank you. Well, since um, the person I'm debating does more talking when in this first um, video, after the debate officially ends, I decided that I'm going to throw this in there real quick and something at the end for you to make it even. So five points real fast. Number one, every year there are many, many graduates, nursing graduates, psychiatry degrees given out, psychology degrees given out. And so this becomes part of what the policymakers consider when they're making social policy and legislation, um, as well as big pharmaceuticals companies needs and hospital needs and police needs as well. But we'll get into that. Number two, big pharma has a huge uh, marketing um, sector. Nine out of 10 pharmaceutical companies spend more money on marketing than research. Okay, and so they, it's very aggressive marketing, you know, in psych wards, pharmaceutical companies actually send people there to talk about the benefits of the drugs to the captive audience in the psych ward. And, and, you know, there's kickbacks and there's, you know, consultants, you know, for pharmaceutical companies that sit on the, um, the board for the DSM, the Diagnostical Statistical Analysis of Mental Disorders. Okay, now there's the police who have undesirables they wish to get off the streets. You know, we all know the police have certain policies. For example, they'll sweep on Thursday and things such of this nature so that they have less work to do on the weekends. You know, so they sweep the type of people who might act up on the weekend uh, during the week. And they'll specifically target them. Number four, and the same thing goes for, you know, the quote-unquote mentally ill or political dissidents or any other undesirables. Number four is the hospital beds. There are very expensive hospitals that are very expensive to run. And if they weren't overactive and overzealous with filling up the psych wards and um, collaborating with the police to fill up the psych wards, they would have, they would probably take losses uh, every month, every year, instead of making profits. And number five, there's over a half a million deaths from psychiatric medications in Western countries alone and there's tons of cognitive damage. And from the perspective of the elite and for people who are in different political groups who want people who think like them to do well and the people who believe... Um, probably about 2009. Okay, and uh, let's see. Now, how old would you be around then? About, uh, you said you're 34 now, was it? Yes. Uh, around, around then, I'd, pro I'd be about... 27, 28, something like that. Okay, well, let me refer back to what you had mentioned about schizophrenia, that 
it very rarely has a late onset. Onset, and between the ages of like twenty to thirty, that's still very much within the realm of it. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not going to diagnose you here. I'm not anybody credible whatsoever. I'm just a guy on the internet, just like you are. I mean, the only difference is I'm wearing a Dragon Ball Z shirt, and you're dressed like you're about to karate chop me or something. But we'll we'll, we'll leave that aside. But the the thing that I'm getting at is that you're very much within that age group to be susceptible to having that mental illness. Okay. And another thing I want to refer back to, you brought up MK Ultra. MK Ultra existed. I completely agree. You know what also is that uh, directional weapon stuff, all that other stuff, you guys always have a source to point back to the proof that this stuff exists. Show me the proof that this is actually being used on you. Show me, were you MK Ultra at any point in your life? Uh, you don't have to answer right now, but you can answer that later. But um, uh, do you suffer from B2K? And when you see the YouTube videos that get posted, right? A large percentage of them are pretty much just like like you, and it's not just not just like you. I mean, you're all individuals in your own way, you know. And uh, but the thing is, is you don't actually see targeted gang stuff going on. What you see is somebody that's sitting in a parking lot or or like Nappy Head Roots. He's out in public somewhere, and it looks like he's going up to this group of people who look like they're homeless and they they may be mentally unstable perhaps he goes up to them whips out his phone and starts antagonizing them for whatever reason that he perceives that oh this guy rubbed his nose or this guy scratched his nuts or whatever that's aimed at me because i'm happy had roots and i'm special the people who think like them manage to avoid psychiatry they have no problem with the types of people who die from psych meds or the types of people who get cognitive damage who then have difficulty competing with them and the people who think like them. So when you look at this, what the person is recommending in this debate is not only wrong, it is killing people. So remember the topic is, does gang stalking exist? Not whether or not there are mentally ill people who claim to be gang stalked, which I believe is the case. Not wish, not if there's people who lie, who, who claim to be gang stalked who aren't, which I also believe that they're the case. But I believe that around half the people who claim to be gang stalked are gang stalked, but even that is irrelevant. The topic is, does gang stalking exist? And if you have a fair and balanced mind, you must come to the conclusion that it does because of the Department of Justice statistics, which says that it does. It says that there's smear campaigns, there's electronic monitoring, there is rape, there, and, and the reasons people do it is for control. The police do this in, in as much as 1% of cases. Do the math. What's 1% of 3.4 million people? If that is what the studies seem to indicate, in fact, that is what the studies do indicate when you interpret the results and the data correctly. So when you hear this debate, come to, you must come to the conclusion that I have won this debate because the Department of Justice makes it clear that exactly what people are describing as gang stalking takes place. One last thought I'm going to leave you with. This is not a debate about whether technology, you know, is being used in gang stalking because I'm being gang stalked excuse me, as far as, you know, voice to skull, energy weapons, etc. I'm being gang stalked and they are not using voice to skull or any energy weapons on me. So that is not a topic of the debate. Okay. And we all know that, you know, out of those 40,000 reported rape cases, approximately, drugs were used. So on record, covert drugging is used. I have proven that definitively. Listen to the debate carefully. Thank you. Okay, my argument is this. Conspiracy theories exist on the internet, right? We also have a lot of mentally ill people, and it's not just mentally ill people. Former intelligence agents, Victor Marchetti says MKUltra never stopped in 1977, is when he said that, and that it just, and it, and it, it was just a cover story. There were 51 universities and schools and five prisons involved in MKUltra, as well as the military, uh, several intelligence agencies, and more 
um, there were more than um, over 200 sub projects for MK Ultra, and the idea that it stopped is a stretch of the imagination. Does the military stop making weapons? Is it not concerned with propaganda and the sentiments of the people here and abroad? For example, Dr. Ewan Cameron was the main psychiatrist in MK Ultra, and he was also um, the president of the Canadian Psychiatric Association, president of American uh, Psychiatric Association, the World Psychiatric Associations, the American Psychopathological Association, and the Society of Biological Psychiatry during the 1950s. So I will go into detail showing you that on record, police officers have been accused of stalking and group stalking. Electronic monitoring is used, bugging, email, smear campaigns, rape, property damage, and more. All things that TIs say gang stalkers have been doing. Studies have shown, studies by FFCH have shown that many gang stalking victims have college degrees such as myself and therefore are logical minds. Schizophrenia, according to the experts, rarely has late onset and most gang stalking victims are, you know, in, in their 20s, late 20s, 30s and above. And certainly it is hard to believe that thousands of people would believe the same exact thing and um, not all of them are into conspiracy theory. And the government has been caught doing what they claim has been done with COINTELPRO, MKUltra, Mind War, and more. Then consider the head of the Army Psychological Unit came up with Mind War in 1980, a self-confessed Satanist, Mike, Major Michael Kino from PSYOP to Mind War, uh, the psycho Psychology of Victory. Well, it's your turn now. Okay. Um, let me, let me, can I ask you a question? How old are you? I'm 34. 34. Okay. When did you um, start to believe in conspiracy theories? I'm just asking you questions just so I can kind of get a better grounding on where you're coming from. Probably when, when did, when, Well, not conspiracy theories per se. When did you feel uh, the age you were when all this kind of started, right? But like when you felt like you were being targeted and that you were being oppressed by various agencies, etc. Well, I was once a very heavy conspiracy theorist. I have a video on my channel that goes into detail about that a little bit. I used to believe some pretty extreme stuff. And I thought because I made videos on the internet just very much like you, uh, exposing what I thought I believed to be true, that I was actually uh, getting across a message, et cetera, et cetera. And I believed as well at the time, not so heavily as you or other people, but I believed maybe the Illuminati was watching me because I was exposing some risk. But nevertheless, as I uh, grew out of this, it wasn't necessarily the case, in my opinion, that that was going on. I was actually being delusional and paranoid. But the crux of my argument is this. And I'm going to get to that as I expound on this later, but you take some mentally unstable people, right? Such as Myron May. I don't know if you've heard of him. He was prominent there for a little bit in the TI communities after he did what he did. And if you're not aware of what he did, I'll let you know. He went into Florida State University and into the library and started unloading his shotgun on the people. And the reason why, I don't know. Those people had nothing to do with his gang stalking or whatever, but his whole purpose was, I'm going to go out here and harm people and leave all these messages behind and send shit to, uh, what's her name? I believe her name is uh, Renee Pittman, Renee Michelle Pittman. You probably heard of her too. But all of this stuff was going on, and uh, she believed he was an imposter. Like, a gang stalker couldn't actually lose his fucking shit and go out there and hurt somebody, or a targeted individual, I'm sorry. She thought he was an imposter. She could have actually gotten him help. But there's people like you, and there's instances of you on the internet that do this, and others that actually dissuade people from seeking help that they very much need. Right, right. And these people... Okay, not two minutes is yeah, up, yeah. I guess. I'll go ahead and let you go. Yeah, okay. Go ahead and read book. All right, I'm going to state my intros and I'll, I'll address those later. Um, when I get my five minutes, I will show you using a 2009 DOJ um, report that gang stalking does exist. When you couple that with COINTELPRO and ABC News' documentary about MK Ultra in 1979, it becomes apparent. Let me just, it becomes apparent that gang stalking still exists. Um, uh, a former